I think this is so fucking cool, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love the idea that this band was like, we could just be a band. Right. Or we could be more. We could be Lord of the Rings. <laughs> and heavy metal. Uh, like, I want to discuss Sleep Token today. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to see how deep you went with this, man. I got to be honest. I completely wrote this band off from like the moment I first saw them until probably... Well, last weekend when I was down there with you, I got to give you all the yeah. credit. You are the reason I turned the corner on this band. I wrote this band off because what I was seeing and what I was hearing was not jiving. Since I've spent more time with this band, they sound totally different now. But like the initial impressions are like the vocals I couldn't get past. When you look like that and then you have this. I don't even know how to describe the vocal. Like, I described it to you last weekend like a five finger death punch vocal, which I just do not find cool at all. <laughs> I'd like to take that back. It's not like that at all. <laughs> Redacted. But that's, it, it just, what I was seeing and hearing, it wasn't jiving. And so I didn't give them a second thought. I've had people recommend them to me. I've heard them talked about. They're all over social media. And I completely wrote them off. Last weekend, I'm in Josh's car. We're headed to the gym. And he plays this song called Chokehold, which is the yes. newest song off their newest yeah. or the first song off their newest album. And it kind of grabbed me when it first started playing. I saw the artist with Sleep Token. I kind of went, eh, I think we had a brief conversation about it. Um, it grabbed me, though. By the end of that song, I was like, man, that was a really, really cool song. And so I started to kind of listen to some other songs on that album. And it, I'm obsessed with them, dude. <laughs> Their music is incredible. And I want to share with you three reasons that make Sleep Token different. But before I do that, I would like to hear your thoughts. Where are you at with this band? Have I brought them more on you since you brought them upon me initially? Like, where are you at with Sleep Token right now? So right off the bat yeah absolutely we we tend to feed off each other's enjoyment of a thing sure. um I, that's always been true right we yeah. we just we have that kinship to where i might get into one thing and be insistent and you're like i don't know i don't know oh yeah i really like it actually i really really like that and yeah. then together we both realize like oh we're both kind of fucking super fans of that one thing <laughs> right. um i feel that happening right now um, yeah. so sleep token, I, I distinctly remember seeing some buzz about them. This mm -hmm. was probably, man, this had to have been like last spring, almost a year ago, maybe when this album just came out it and did come out 23. So that's probably correct. Okay. So it couldn't have been long after it came out. Anyway, I'm getting to the point. Um, choke holds the first song on that CD or the album CD. What's a CD anymore? I listened to that really liked that. And then the shift from that song to the next two or three songs is so abrupt. Yeah. In the shift in in style, you it goes a completely different dir direction than what you think it's going to go. Uh, and add to that, these guys don't sound the way they look. I went from being kind of psyched, having listened to Chokehold, to bouncing off of them immediately and being like, ah, actually, I don't like this. Yes. Um, never mind that I only made it like three songs in. Fast forward to a couple months ago is when I was in North Carolina. And I actually saw someone doing a vocal cover. It was actually uh, the dude from Lorna Shore, believe it or not. Oh, the, okay. The crazy pig squeal dude, I think right? I've seen that thumbnail. I haven't listened to it, but that video yeah. was floating around. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Will Ramos from Lorna Shore covering... Yes the intro vocal to to chokehold and i was like he does a good job actually he's really he's known for his like you know <laughs> you know like <laughs> right crazy you know i didn't know he could sing but i was like that's kind of a heater and i was like oh it's sleep token i feel like i bounced off of them really bad right so i went back to that song and it was for two days straight yeah nothing but yeah had it locked in my brain man um 
and now I'm back on some sleep token shit, man. That's pretty much, pretty much where I'm at. Like ever since you were here last weekend and we're like willing to give them a second chance, it made me want to do a deeper dive. Yeah. And enjoy some of their other tracks that again, don't sound like chokehold, but are also really fucking good. I, funny enough, I, I, I did a little bit of like a rabbit hole dive seeing if anybody knew who they were. And I don't want to right. make that about this because we've already been accused of doxing Vagrant Holiday. <laughs> We're going to become the, yeah. the doxing podcast. It's not that. The dox, the doxers, yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to give you three reasons why yeah. I love Sleep Token and why I think they're different. So the first one is kind of a blanket. They are unique in that like the way that they look, the way that they sound, I feel like they're making really unique, different sounding music. Now, in a world where a lot of the stuff can kind of sound the same, or if it sounds different and sets itself apart, it might just not be that good. So there's a difference yeah. between, like you can be unique, but to be unique and different and good, I think is a totally, a totally different thing. There's a ton of variation with them. They have some crazy heavy like scream parts they have some like extremely light-hearted almost like i don't even know how to describe it just like really light like cheery songs and parts and songs they have parts where there's like beats and he's almost kind of rapping over it which sounds really gimmicky but doesn't ever come across that way so i think just in general their uniqueness as far as the way they look the way they sound, and then the variation that they bring. Just like you said, Chokehold moves into a different song that sounds completely different, that then moves into another song that sounds completely different. And this whole album kind of has a certain vibe and a certain sound. You can tell it's all Sleep Token, but each song has its, it's such an individual like journey and experience and vibe that I think that's one of the main reasons what they bring to it i i agree so i'm i'm doing as you're talking here because this is something that i'm gonna drop this in our discord chat so you can look at as a as i yeah. talk about it here um so one thing i didn't realize about this band and you know like i said at first glance i think both of us were you look at this band and you're expecting maybe something slipknot yeah adjacent. yes you know they're they really they look intense they've got you know they're all all their skin is covered in this like almost like oily greasy black paint Just, yeah um, yeah there's their skin that you can see anyway the rest of them is they're wearing kind of robes and masks and stuff like that anyway the band has like this whole pantheon of lore i guess like uh so I'm looking at right now, I'm sharing with Cody. I know for our audio listeners, this may not be as rewarding. Is it the runes? Um, yes. So okay. all throughout their music videos, their album art, their actual costumes, their regalia that they wear, they have symbols and characters, almost wow. like hieroglyphs, um, kind of all, all steeped throughout that stuff. And it is a coded language that uh i wow. guess and I, I i'm talking it i'm talking about this from a very low level of understanding but they have an entire like codex of lore running wow. all throughout their stuff so all of their work presumably is conceptual and it's you know it's unique that you talked about all of their songs being different but also kind of kind of laying out this concept as right. a whole Mm -hmm. uh, even with just uh, just the album, I really want to dive deeper into this. And I know a lot of this is probably known. It's not known to us, right? We're um, pretty new to this. Pretty new to the party. Exactly. And I I want to be I want to be abundantly clear. I think this is so fucking cool, man. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love that we live in the age of like a simple thing becoming a whole <laughs> yeah. MCU. Yeah, I I love that. I love the idea that this band was like we could just be a band, right? Or we could be more. We could be Lord of the Rings. <laughs> yeah. Like it's I'm all really about that. cool. Apparently, so I, I watched a video. Sleep is apparently 
like a god or a goddess or something like that. So it's the whole thing is about like the lead singer's name is Vessel, right? Right. So apparently right, right. it's something to do with like he is the vessel from this god or goddess named Sleep that is bringing music and people together to like whatever. I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of with you. I don't fully understand it. There's a lot there though. There's more than just the music. And I think that's why, I don't know, they have like replay value. You know, it's it's not just a yeah. song. There's so much to go along with it. Um, that's really cool. I, I don't, you kind of just broke that to me. I didn't know that they had that whole, uh, um, all that to it. Goes deep, bro. It does. Goes There's deep. so much about this band. So number two, okay. the musicianship is insane dude i sent you that video yeah. of like the drum cover i don't i'm not a drummer i don't know i know that's fucking crazy though i've watched it 20 times i can't get enough of that video it's awesome dude like the crossovers just, i don't know what he's doing and you pointed out he's doing it in a mask that snare be popping yeah. like there's so many cool things about the drumming and that's just one aspect um, just it kind of stay on the just drumming. across the band, man. Across the band, there's like intense devotion to musicianship. Yes, the do the vessel vessel's vocal capability is. If at, at first I see why people kind of get like a, uh, I think you know a five finger death punch vibe out of it. Yeah. But if you spend some time with it, you realize no, this dude can yeah. fucking croon, bro. Yes, and he can do all. He can do like the high pitch kind of falsetto stuff. He can do some screams. Yeah. Something that sticks out with me to something that sticks out about him to me is like the emotion that you hear in his voice. Like it is yeah. it is not flat and dry and boring. It like he just brings such a feeling and emotion to these lyrics. The lyrics are awesome, I think. There's several parts where it's like a chorus or even just like a little hook that I find myself singing with it or rapping with it, you know, like it's yeah. really fun stuff. And you're right. His voice is unreal. Um, and a lot was, of the, a lot of the like, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, you're good. Go ahead. No, 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 you're good. Well, I was going to say a lot of the way that um, some of the like verses are structured um, melodically almost have kind of a modern like like a post Malone vibe. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, like he will he will kind of rap sing a verse in a way that's like, dude, and it will sound at first glance. It's like this is just a song about like relationship problems and like right, talks right. about like heartache and uh, you know uh, uh, pain and relationships and stuff like that. But then you kind of like juxtapose that with this crazy like, oh, and also there's this sleep goddess. All <laughs> yeah, kinds of just to, like what 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 else is going on here? Um, but yeah, I. I it's very, no, it's very I, like, it just feels very current, very current music. I, I totally agree. I would say, um, the guitars, what, how big of a player would you say they are? Like a lot of the stuff you and I listen to, the guitars are kind of like the driving factor behind a lot of these bands and music. I don't feel like they're quite as present with this band. They're there, but it's not like the thing that's bringing me to these songs. Do you feel that way or do you disagree? I do, but I also like the way they're building these songs. It's less. I feel like in a metal band, the guitars are straight. That's the machine gun on top of the Humvee, sure. right? That is just yeah. that's your primary weapon system, right? With this band, it's all, like every instrument, to include the vocal sections, all feel like a smaller piece of a bigger orchestra. Yes. And so, like, when they use guitars like chokehold's a prime example of the first time we hear a guitar it's a pretty simple part but it thumps so fucking loud and it's yeah. so like just visceral sounding it's literally just like open note and then like a bent octave chord like do yeah and they do this kind of weird siren thing with it almost they don't they don't do anything crazy with guitars, but right. when an instrument is featured, whether it's the drums or the the guys singing, or they're gonna let the guitar kind of like take it away, 
Right. It's it's amazing. I that is a great way to put it. There's it's like they're all just a piece of this one thing that you hear. You know, it's not yeah. this it, it's not even like individual layers. It's just one sound coming at you that is built by multiple individual pieces but a lot of times you don't even hear like this from that it's just it's one thing with yeah. all these a lot of depth to it i love it I, back to the drums for a quick moment you and i are guitar guys but yeah i think we've always had a love for like if a song or a band has got some badass drums in it dude like you and i will get down with that and love good drums this dude can shred bro he, he he's can. got the, the snare taps he's got i don't even know what all the terminology is but it's intoxicating like watching and listening to this dude drum it's awesome absolutely there's a, a there is like one of the only interviews that any of them have ever given any of them has been a solitary interview with the drummer talking yeah. about his inspiration for uh, his drum style. He actually talks about, it's kind of an unlikely source, but highly inspired by like the British um, underground EDM scene being oh, kind wow. of like a driver for a lot of his stylings, which I think is really cool. I think that's a really not typical, you would think, you know, any metal band's going to be like, oh, I really love Neil Peart. Well, <laughs> okay, cool. So what does everyone else, you know? Um, but yeah, man, I, I just like, there's there's a solidness and a tightness in his playing for sure that, um, I really, I just love tight drums, man. I and if, good if you're sounding tight, drums. If it sounds yes, thick and punchy, like oh, properly dude. tuned, properly maintained heads, yeah. like you know, fresh set of sticks. Why not, man? It's that. That's all. Awesome. I didn't know that that was his. Uh, kind of some of his. What's the word? Like uh, what it, he looks up to, is, looks uh, back it, to it, is inspiration. inspiration. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got yeah. a lot of kind of like electronic drums. You know, parts that sound like it was made by a computer, I'm convinced he's still like, he's still playing <laughs> that, dude. It's, it's, it, it all works together. There's so many things there stylistically that probably mm -hmm. shouldn't work together. There's right. one song I really like. I think it's three or four on this latest album called Aqua, Aqua Regia. Aqua Regia, um, yeah. Aqua. And, Regia. Regia. Yeah, yeah. That one is one of the more poppy sounding songs. But there is just this like fluidity to it that yes. no actual pop song has. I I wish more pop music sounded like this. To be that honest, almost got a lot of like keys um, in it. Almost got had like a jazzy part it does. in that song. And it really there's so much of this band. Like we've been on a really big synthwave kick for like our down mm -hmm. vibe time. So much of that getting tapped yeah. in this. I, I love that they let kind of over reverberated synth kind of eke in there. They're not, again, they're not using it in any kind of uh, uh, gratuitous way. I think when they use it, it's, it's appropriate and it really yeah. creates a very unique soundscape. Like that, that song, the apparatus or whatever, by the end of it, when the synth is just like going over the, Oh dude, I was listening to that right before we started recording. It's so cool. It's um, a good one, man. And number three, my last one. Their song progression is so unique to me where a lot of songs are like chorus, verse, chorus, verse. Like you're kind of just doubling back and you hear the same thing. And maybe by the second or third time, you're adding layers and building on it. A lot of their songs have a starting point and an ending point. And they don't really like double back or revisit anywhere that they were earlier in that song. It's like a Simpsons episode. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really cool. Like you, it, it makes for more of it. Like in racing, I don't know why this makes sense. There's like waypoint racing where it's like A to B. And then there's laps where you're, you know, you're doing the same thing like three times. And I feel like a lot of songs are just like the same thing three times with a little bit of something thrown in there with each time. This is just, you start somewhere and you end somewhere. And it's like one build yeah. And it's really cool. It's really, it's really, really cool. cool. I dig it. It is, man. And I, I don't know. I'm all for abandoning the classic uh, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, or, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, right. re refrain, chorus. You know, right. I, I want to be taken on 
a journey, right? I, you know, one of my favorite bands that I found between the years of 2010 and 2019 was the contortionist. Mm -hmm. Um, I, 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 that just was one of those bands that I felt like they were the kings of taking a little like two measure part that was like this is the best part in the whole album and they only play it for two measures and they never go back to it and <laughs> right i feel like that requires such it sounds weird but like bravery as a musician to have like we have this part that is super 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 good and we're gonna play it one time and abandon it i am definitely like writing music i'm like i'm gonna write a good riff and I'm going to play it for eight fucking bars, baby. Um, <laughs> well, milk token, that thing for similar. everything it's got. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're milking it now. Uh, <laughs> no, Sleep Token, definitely not doing that. Like Even the things they do return to, um, they do it in a way that they just don't abuse it. They don't overdo right. it. Um, they keep it moving when they need to keep it moving. Yeah. They do come back and hark, harken back to a motif or a, 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 a melody yeah. when it makes sense. Like on Chokehold, the second time that they double back to that, now, now, it sounds completely different than the first time. They are kind of doubling it. It does, yeah. But it's it sounds totally different. It's not just, you know, kind of doubling back to it. I love them, dude. I, I am so glad you played that song in that car that day because they are just like my thing <laughs> right now. I'm really enjoying them.